Welcome back. A study has found dangerous amounts of arsenic in the groundwater of two villages in Kiani. This in the Limpopo province. Long-term exposure can cause cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and even skin lesions. While the report suggests that the high concentration may be through natural occurrence of the result of gold mining activities in the area. And residents of the two affected villages rely on borehole water. Now, Professor Angela Mati from the uh, SA Medical Research Council joins us now to talk more about this and prof thank you so much for your time and good uh, morning to you i understand uh, this uh, report actually this study was published back in april of this year finding that two residents uh, rather that residents in two villages in limpopo uh, had dangerous amounts of arsenic in their drinking water uh, take me through you know how the study was conducted and what else was found um, well, we, d we conducted the study in three villages, uh, one that we used as a control, one that we regarded as having moderate environmental exposure, and the third that we thought uh, the exposure was elevated. And that is what we found. We found um, that in the test village and in the moderate village, they had elevated levels of arsenic uh, relative to the control village. We also found higher proportions in those two villages of uh, water samples that had arsenic levels above the WHO's guideline levels. And when we tested people's blood, we found the same pattern, that those who lived in the villages with the highest levels of arsenic in soil and in water also had the highest levels of arsenic in their blood. For clarity, perhaps, uh, let's go back a bit. What is arsenic? Um, arsenic is a naturally occurring metal, like you said, so it occurs in various concentrations in the ground uh, across the world. So the concentrations that we found in soil um, in, in our study sites, they are much, much lower in the water as well. They're much, much lower than uh, we see in places like Bangladesh. Bangladesh probably has the worst arsenic problem uh, globally and we also found much higher levels in china india um, in mexico um, uh, etc so ours was relatively low but still a proportion above the who guidelines mm. um, but it's also used in industries like in glass in leather manufacture and you also find arsenic in tobacco so smokers often have uh, slightly elevated levels of arsenic uh, compared to non-smokers. Yeah, and I understand that when you made mention of, of, of the soil and arsenic being found uh, within the soil, Prof, perhaps correct me here if I'm, if I'm wrong, um, I mean, the, the, the soil, we understand that most people, at least in, in the parts of Guiani where this research was conducted, most of them depend on boreholes, right, in the absence of piped water. So equally concerning could be the amount of arsenic within their bloodstreams due to drinking this water that may be contaminated. That is right. I think uh, more than 80%, as I recall, of people are reliant on borehole water. I, I, for, I think there is water supply infrastructure uh, in place, but there's no water coming out of the taps. Um, so they are reliant on borehole water, and we do think that contributes uh, to the problem of the high arsenic exposure. Hmm. I want to also touch on, you know, the access of uh, clean water out in the area. Um, when you did your research, is there access, you know, to, to clean water a majority of the time in, you know, a good vast of the space of the area out in Guiani? Or did you find that most people, they did depend on this water that had high levels of arsenic inside? Yes, I mean, I think most people, like I said, more than 80% use the borehole water. And we did find, find that in that one particular village with a high exposure, um, that also had the highest proportion of arsenic in the water, arsenic in soil, and arsenic in the blood of the people uh, in that village. And we do think, I mean, there there's three broad areas of intervention to help reduce the exposure. Uh, the first is uh, filtration, and that can be very costly. And then uh, some people have also suggested quite recently that supplementation with folic acid uh, would also make a difference. But by far, there is agreement internationally that a safe supply of water mm. is the best intervention to protect people against arsenic. Yeah. And so in this context, it is 
a real pity um, that the Guiani Water Project was impacted by corruption and mismanagement. Um, and so that obviously had a, a delaying impact, um, a delaying effect on people receiving safer water. But it's also very encouraging for us to hear now that Minister uh, Senzo Mthunu has uh, given assurance that the Guiani Water Project is back on track. And so we are hopeful uh, and, uh, you know, that they will soon have a safer supply of water. Mm. Prof, perhaps let me just uh, kick the tin a bit further here in terms of asking if there's a, a universally agreed threshold uh, for the amount of arsenic that is safe uh, for people to have within their bloodstreams. Um, there isn't. So the World Health Organization, for example, has a guideline for arsenic in water and many international organizations have a guideline for arsenic in soil. There isn't a similar guideline for arsenic in um, in blood. Uh, we just we in, so in our study we've compared it to a control. So we know that people have elevated levels of arsenic in the test village relative to the control. Mm. Um, and uh, different organisations have used the distribution in the local population as a guide. Uh, to compare who's, who has elevated levels of arsenic. And so the World Health Organization, for example, think uh, they believe there's evidence above 10 micrograms per liter of arsenic in water uh, that it does have a detrimental health impact on, pop on the population.